So the uh, second phase of, uh, or the second branch of what we do is um, the game design portion and that is very much a kidding myself and Keith kind of a thing. Since Keith is in both of them you can guess where the bottleneck is. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> It's got a lot on its plate. So, first thing first, uh, and there's nothing on this board that we can't talk about at this point, um, right behind Kenny. Uh, game design, sculpting, art and layout, cork board kind of graph, and it tells us, uh, and then the rows are alpha, beta, production, and shipping. Now, these are rough labels because um, alpha really means any idea that I may have had uh, hasn't got to the point where Kenny and I have started talking about it yet. The process on the game design side starts here. Uh, this is my home. Uh, this is my game room and uh, this is where every idea I have starts. Um, I incubate those ideas, test those ideas, play with those ideas, imagine those ideas. Uh, I go through several iterations, like this is the early dumpster diver stuff, and then this is early dumpster diver prototype, and it gets played. Uh, and around at this point, when I have rough rules and rough uh, components, is when I usually bring Kenny in, take it to Kenny, uh, and he and I work on the game design document. And really, that document is is a shared Google Drive document where we just pour into it everything that we can think of, uh, starting with my base document. Um, and then he adds and asks me questions and I ask questions of certain things and we start to get in the nitty gritty of game design. Really the game design is nothing more than asking yourself how, what you want to see in the game and, and can you make a mechanic that gets you there. Uh, and he and I do that together. Um, like for instance, Right now I'm working on, uh, besides the Mercs RPG, which isn't up there as you can see, um, and Jimmy versus the eight-legged aliens from Jupiter, that's not up there quite yet, working title, obviously. Uh, but Open Space, which we're not going to talk about, but that's in Alpha. Emergence Event, uh, while it's already out, the expansions and, and stuff like that is in Beta. Uh, Dark Frontier is in Beta. Uh, Dark Frontiers in beta because the couple last couple yeah. monsters and stuff that we want to add as far as stretch goals are concerned uh, are in testing, and then there's a whole bunch of other stuff. So you see Banner Saga's in production, uh, Dark Frontiers in production. What does that mean? That means there's miniatures kind of for the sculpting portion of it. This, there's a stuff already done for it. A Myth Two, uh, Myth Squared is actually Myth Journeyman. Uh, don't don't think it's Myth Two. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's Journeyman and uh, obviously uh, a lot of the sculpts are already in production if not uh, finished. Um, uh, game design wise, uh, there's something over there right behind Kenny's head, I'll focus on it because we're going to talk about it. Uh, Dumpster Diver, it's a game design I had a, a while ago and, and I've been working on it and then I kind of just showed up and said okay here it is, uh, gave it to Kenny and Kenny and I, and so how it works is, Kenny is game designer, game producer, and I'm basically game designer. Um, I come up with a, a decent amount of the mechanics. Kenny tells me no, a lot. <laughs> Fixes anything that I'm doing that's not quite working out and making sure that um, it all has a cohesive kind of language to it. Uh, he's uh, super important to my process. Um, and then after he and I have talked about something, that's when we force Keith to do something. Yes. <laughs> so we're going to talk about Dumpster Dive real quick. You've never even heard of it before, but it's basically a designed game, ready to go to print, um, um, almost. Okay. So back over to Keith. So and we'll segue to Kenny. Um, I have an opportunity to play it too, and it gives me kind of a taste of of kind of. You know how the game works. What kind of parts and pieces are needed in the game? The icons. What elements are sort of needed? Um, just based even off of the name, and just after, have, after having discussions about it, I already kind of have a, an idea in my mind of kind of the look and feel. And and dumpster diver just wanted to be a just a fun 
just you know jovial kind of a <laughs> look and look to it and, and if you don't know what dumpster diving is it's when you dive into a dumpster to get stuff that is usable uh, and or to sell uh, or to keep uh, and a lot of people do it after like colleges are let out because everyone just throws a bunch of really nice things in the dumpster and this is important because the idea for the game came from uh, my dear sweet wife <laughs> uh, for a time enjoyed uh, her share of dumpster diving with a friend of hers so had yeah. the inspiration for so this was the uh, the first round card design um, you can see here we just you just have placeholder elements here trying to get the look and feel for the card no uh, one's throwing away a crossbow now no one's throwing away a crossbow <laughs> uh, I already knew um, I loved the sound of the game and uh, I really wanted to do the images so I knew that I knew the art style would be close to um, this sort of myth look so I just dumped a crossbow in here to see it would it work and this was the original sort of design uh, here is an actual piece of art um, again to check and make sure things are still working now are showing this around and, and there um, was some feedback. This is where I and Ke Kenny give a lot of feedback right here because we play the game more. Everyone plays Absolutely. the games, but we play the game mm -hmm. quite a bit more before it even goes into any kind of wide testing. And, and already, there's no hierarchy among the icons. Can you tell me what's the most important thing on that card? And, and we just ask ourselves some basic questions. What is someone going to look at that card and think, what's the most important thing? And uh, right now, everything is weighted equally. Yeah. So uh, we sort of went back and we made some adjustments um, to see if this was a little bit closer, where we put dominance on the icon uh, itself that indicated which particular um, suit it was, if you will. Yeah, yeah the circle right. on the dollar sign went away yeah. too, just to just to let that be more tertiary in terms of its, right. its visual read. Right. So at this point, we feel pretty good about the design, but we have uh, icons that we need. So we'll go to a uh, dear friend, Chris Doman, who you is a know. good, good uh, designer and great with Illustrator. So he submitted uh, these icons to us for options for the different uh, suits here, and so we have these options here and you'll see here uh, we'll sort of pass this around the office and we'll kind of offer our opinions make selections we have all our initials around which ones we like and don't like and um, we'll make commentaries on it and so on and so forth uh, if and you know we just we just kind of decide which one makes the most sense we'll talk about it after all the feedbacks in and, and we'll make selections uh, based upon these, but these were some really great submissions. So we had some tough choices in some of these. They, uh, there's multiples that could have been used, but we try to make the best decision. Um, this was the uh, you saw the initial logo that was just sort of done for placeholder. Uh, we originally had a little character diving in, which we we thought was was kind of fun. Um, these uh, logos were first round submission from Chris. Um, nice logos, a little bit too, uh, I'll say hip hop. Uh, for you, or, or to a little, to a little more graffiti than I kind of yeah. wanted to see. Uh, so I sort of kicked that feedback to him, and this was his next uh, submission, which I thought was just fantastic. Um, I think this is a really nice font, and I love the construction of this logo. But I adore this one here with all the little parts and wonderful elements. Um, dumpster diving as an experience, as as one who has experienced dumpster diving, I can tell you, you, you don't know the quality of said items that you're going to get so I love the sort of rubbish feel of these items and so we sort of uh, adopted this yeah. as the direction so and then, then yeah I, and I sort of skipped this this is the final iteration of the card with uh, a piece of actual physical artwork from uh, for the game as well and so and then we think about what size of box we want and we think about things like price point then we talk about printing and mm. all the kinds of things that we're not gonna Let's really get into details here with, um, since it's, there's no miniatures involved in this game, it's a completely paper product. It becomes a, a much more manageable kind of a thing. Oh, I see some dumpster dive art up here. Sure, sure. This is the, uh, the Slamma Jamma. Uh, <laughs> anytime you find things thrown out that are bins of clothing or trash cans, they're always full of things. They're never empty. So you all, you never know what you're going to find inside the Slamma Jamma trash can or the uh, laundry basket full of clothing. <laughs> Uh, the college lamp, the pink chair, you know, yeah. the sky's the limit. So. You have, the, have that desk by chance? Uh, I do have the desk. This is the desk. Oh, and we do little, like, little 
Merch logo. Uh, what's that? One eight hundred Kenny Sims. Oh, Kenny, Kenny, Kenny Sims. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, let's talk about a little bit of journeyman. Right. So when Brian gets done with his initial ideas for design, and he just kind of comes up with ideas for like, hey, how's this particular deck gonna work or whatever. He'll send me a usually a PDF or a Word doc. I do not do InDesign and I know that's <laughs> a big chagrin for everyone out there who does game design. <laughs> uh, I find other ways to do it. Uh, I can use InDesign but Kenny is the InDesign guy. Well now I am at least. <laughs> yeah. um, so he'll send me like this document like, and these are something that we can play with at any time but at a certain point we're like okay we gotta move this along and get it to more like real language. So, yeah, this this basically has been tested internally and externally. It's already had changes and when he gets a PDF from me, that means these are good to go. The language may need to be changed and he's going to make sure the language is consistent uh, throughout the whole thing and then he... I turn it into this. Right now the color is not the right one, but I'll put everything in and like, you know, for example, on this one, you know, Brian wrote at least four Malice and I put Malice tokens in the Malice pool right. and it said reroll misses. I make sure it says reroll misses once. Right. These are like all little things that I do as we're putting these in. Another yeah, thing and then, that... Uh, may I? Yeah, go ahead. And then basically he gets these and I'm going to come over there here in a minute. Uh, we get PDFs and or printed versions and they get tested. Um, with final design before you move on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, another aspect, you know, it's along the same lines, but normally uh, when I get documents for like, let's just say quests or whatever, um, they'll be in a Word doc. Um, they'll have headers and they'll be styled a certain way, which yeah. we've set those styles. Yeah, so if you don't understand <clears throat> smart styles and things like that, this isn't going to make much sense to you. And you're going to say, that doesn't look like any Word document I've ever used. So <laughs> if, if you let me, we make sure we have a column over here that lets us tell immediately what a particular style is. Uh, it doesn't necessarily matter what that style says in the document, but that style corresponds to a particular font and style that Keith has already designed. Mm -hmm. And so we know setup is going to be um, a header, not the most prominent header on the on the page. FT text is just plain text. Character story or is something that needs to be set apart. But we see things like this and you know if I may quote the matrix we don't even see uh, we don't it, even see the code. You know, we see it how it's going <laughs> to appear on a page yeah. when we see something like that and so it helps us kind of immediately move into it. Like production call outs to say front of card and back of card. I uh, use the picture for this Black uh, this B what W card replace Yardu with Gal Gal Galatus. Gelatus. Gelatus. Yeah. And so little you know, <laughs> these are the things that Kenny and I create. Um, and then they get turned into that with uh, Kenny and Keith and Chris Dolman. Right. And when I when we have these production calls, you know, um, I don't set up the initial design because I'm just learning in design right now of uh, quest cards, but when I send them to Chris Doman, I usually send it along a production call out and then I'll tell him, hey, this is the general setup, uh, but use the correct icons and the correct miniature and this is always the start point. I always put heroes there so he knows what those are. It's very simple and then when he sends it back to me, then I can go in and do corrections and InDesign so he doesn't have to do that final process. All right. Yeah, for instance, this is this is a quest and that's a quest card image and then those those are turned into those final, do you have a final one by chance? And all that turns into let's, this. Let's go to card 13 because that's the one we showed. Legendary loot. So subsumed is it. So then we get the actual icon in, the fact that it's a quest chain. Here's that character story text you see, it's italicized. Um, this would be the, the A head probably. Yep. And then we'll have, you know, we had the call outs for which one was, a, you know, a successful resolution, which one was a failure. And then this is the back of it. That's what he was saying, replace Taraxis with Gelatus. You notice those four treasure, and this is the start where the heroes are. And then after Kenny gets done with it, and it gets kind of designed, we have the pre-testing that is basically all white cards because there's no need to worry about a design yet. Uh, and then it gets to, now some of these... Um, are are printed out just for your pleasure to talk about. Uh, for instance, little changes that we made. Uh, Greg is a is our beta tester director. 
he was messing with them. He's like, you know what? I, I have real trouble distinguishing which cards are which cards. And so we added so the black diamond or the white circle, depending. And so the white circle would be the, uh, you know, feedback like that from, from testers um, helps us with final design. But also, you know, we take a look at every card with art in it. Does it work the way we want it to work? And I'll talk about that kind of stuff shortly. Uh, darkness cards, so you saw kind of him messing with darkness cards over there. Uh, and, and we create real working documents that we use internally and we send them to the people doing testing um, and they make their own cards um, and, and whiteboard we test designed and then then we have a final check. The last step in the process we're all involved in, uh, there's two types of proof that comes in. Um, digital proofs that are full color, we do all those kind of checks um, uh, before it even goes to print. And then the next is, what is the official name for this? Uh, it's, it's, it's just, they're, they're laser prints that are sort of put on dummies. The dummies are just usually white copies of the yeah. physical materials. Uh, this is just showing the correlation between front to backs. Is are these the right size components? Do nice. we have all the things? Yeah. I mean, it's just really a um, yeah. I mean, it's it's, it's a sure. final final check before yeah. a production sample. Then they print it and send us a production sample. Mm -hmm. uh, and when you're working with a single small game, you can usually um, move through this process pretty quickly. But the the larger games like um, like the myth and and the recon with tons of moving pieces I mean it just takes a long long time to get through all the pieces and parts and so especially with you kind of have to just yeah. keep track of and, and um, you just try to document everything and just make sure you're all your ducks in a row it's 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 yeah it's very time consuming yeah difficult but, yeah and you know, it's okay yeah. <laughs> so, uh, uh, show you a couple things that you're going to see in videos. Um, one, Dark Frontier. Um, we've been having it tested uh, basically every week, if not twice a week, since we first mentioned it in that uh, when in the Journeyman Kickstarter. We've got to the point where the base game is super solid. Um, we added the hero we wanted added, and it's solid. And we've added some monsters, and we're in the basically monster stretch goals and we're in the process of testing but for something like this anything that carries over to myth the the the, the adventure game then it also has to get tested and so testing just doesn't stop there so if we add some kind of unique creature to dark frontier which we plan on doing those things are also tested and everything else and so something like this this is this will be kickstarted uh, this year for sure and then uh, the other thing i do uh, is keep you guys populated with Kickstarter updates. So this is a recon video we're going to shoot today. Um, it is locked down with all the, the, the cool stuff going on with Infected and um, all the cameo characters. Um, because, you know, it's already, I mean, if this was the only game you were getting, that's a lot of stuff right there. But they, but recon people got the two copies of Recon, they got possibly all the expansions. Uh, and then, the, you know, the other part of our job is, especially if you've been following Recon, is when you when you print something and um, you've done everything you could, uh, you gave them correct files and everything is working out well and then you get printed copies and it's all, it's all over the place. Uh, my job is also to hold those people accountable and figure out how to fix it. And 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 it's funny. It's funny. Um, you know, you um, you do myth, and it was late, uh, and so you look for solutions. We felt we um, had to do something. Uh, and so we check out this place. It was recommended to us. They gave us samples. The samples were, were fantastic. Let, let me just say, we wouldn't have gone with them if they wouldn't have uh, given us great samples. But the process through which we've made recon has been in one, one hurdle after another. And, um, and so we're happy to say, you know what, we, we did test uh, 
we did try to find a solution to the, the delays that Myth had. We were unsuccessful. So we're going to go back and use this, the Zebo group uh, for the journeyman miniatures. Uh, and we're going to be using Panda uh, for uh, the Myth printing. Unless, and we're close to getting this, OGP, which is the people who did our tabletop book. We've used them for printed materials for a long time. They are fantastic. Um, and they're, they, they just have exceptional uh, quality and quality control. Uh, they are really, really close to le giving in and starting to do with board games. In fact, we have a, a test uh, with them now. And if they uh, are willing to do the printed components, we may do the printed components um, for a couple of our games through OGP. But for Myth, Myth Journeyman it is Panda and it is Zebo. It is the original groups that did them, and we have assurances in place that uh, that timing will be a little bit better. And it's already been proven that way because Journeyman is well into production at this point, and I think we'll deliver uh, the two base games of Journeyman uh, Shores and Black Wall early, or they'll be on the boats uh, in in June. So that's that's exciting because. You know, we we haven't been able to do that. Uh, we're still learning, and we're we're four to six people.